there. Welcome back to Intuit Knit Podcast. It's Lori here. I'm uh, coming to you from a place just north of Toronto. And uh, if you've been with me before, thanks for coming back. All the new people coming, thanks for joining me. I'm, I'm podcasting under suboptimal conditions today, and I'm going to make it short. But I just thought I would come and make a short podcast before the Christmas season hits. Um, and uh, I just have a few things to show you. So um, I thought, well, I'll just put one in and uh, at least you know I'm still in the land of the living. <laughs> so yeah, it's a winter day. It's a Wednesday today, December 7th, I think it is. Um, I've been running around trying to get things organized um, for Christmas, as probably everybody is doing uh, out there <laughs> uh, that celebrates Christmas anyway. So today I'm uh, going to show you a few of the things that I've got uh, works in progress mostly. Um, yeah, I don't have any finished objects except what I'm wearing. And by now, if you've visited me in the podcast, you've seen this sweater before. This is my hand spun sweater that I made out of an Elizabeth Zimmerman pattern. Well, not really a pattern. It was um, more like a recipe that she had for um, uh, people who would like to uh, you know, design their own construction of sweater. It's the from the bottom up, and uh, then you make uh, the yoke as as you come up. I made it with a steak, and uh, I was relieved to have completed it. <laughs> uh, I didn't think that I wanted to put a button band in just because it wouldn't have really fit with the multitude of colors that I have. And so uh, what I did was I put a zipper in. That's the first time I've ever put a zipper in a garment. Um, and so I was kind of relieved that it worked out for me. Uh, what I did was uh, on either side of the stitches that were going to be ending up to be the fold, um, I put a two strips of gross grain ribbon, which I hand sewed in. Um, and then I machine stitched in uh, after that with a piece of interfacing on the underside so that I wouldn't catch in some of the hand knitting. Um, and uh, that seemed to work out pretty well. Um, and so, yeah, I uh, put the zipper in. I got a, a zipper that was, of course, has an open end on it. And uh, yeah, it worked out pretty well, I think. Quite happy with it. I ended up putting the zipper in um, by hand after I had steeped it. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm quite pleased with the results. It's uh, totally... Uh, a mixture of different yarns that I hand dyed some of them with goldenrod and marigold and um, some that I had acquired just in the different skeins that I had gotten so hopefully the light will let you appreciate the colors it has a bit of a shots of turquoise through there too so um, just a bit of variation uh, on the green yeah, but I'm pretty happy with it. I'm glad I put the zipper in, in fact, because um, sometimes if you, I suppose if you had a sweater that maybe wasn't fitting um, as well as you'd hoped, putting a zipper in tends to give you more options for wearing it anyway. And you could wear it open that way or, you know, um, uh, just, you know, have a, have a different look uh, to the whole sweater. So. Yeah, I'm quite happy with it. It's quite warm, so it almost doubles as a coat. And that would be another instance where you might want to use um, a zipper insertion because uh, if the wool that you're using is quite thick, then it kind of has that coat-like feel to it once you put the zipper in. So um, yeah, it worked out. Okay, so I've got a few little projects that are, I'm doing. As I say, it's going to be a very short podcast, but... Um, I don't know if you've watched the podcast called Camavornia, but um, it's a really enjoyable podcast. Uh, she does uh, a lot of really nice knitwear, mostly color work is what she does. Um, and from that website podcast, I, I got a pattern called, I think it's called the Small Flowers Mitten. <laughs> um, anyway, if you go to Camavornia uh, podcast, and even if you go to her um Ravelry page, uh, you'll see the, the the project. I must say I'm not very good at keeping up with um, making show notes, so I can't even give you that as an option. How bad is that, eh? <laughs> uh, 
Uh, anyway, this is the fingerless mitt. I haven't quite finished it, as you see, because I've got the, the thumb still yet to do. And that is a variation on the original pattern, because in the original pattern, these fingerless mitts have, I think it's a four by one rib on the cuff and on the top. Uh, but I actually forgot when I was casting it on, I just went in my merry mode of uh, putting a two by two rib on. So I got so far into it, I thought, oh, I'm just going to leave it. But I think I'll make some other pairs because I have a lot of um, quantities of sock yarn that is plain. And this is a great way of using up some of your pieces of um, yarn that you might like to put as details in, in, a, in a fingerless mitt. So yeah, so I'm quite happy with those. They, they fit pretty good, pretty well. I, I have smaller wrists, so um, it's not too bad. The rest of me is not small, but my wrists are. <laughs> so um, yeah, they, they worked out pretty well, I think. Yeah, it, it's good because if you do like a snug fit, usually when you do a bit of collar work, it tends to have a tighter gauge. So um, you could get away with, you know, having this around the wrist part because you do want it to be kind of fitted in the wrist area. So that works out well too. So yeah, I'm quite happy with that. I've seen a number of podcasters making these. Uh, I think Sarah of uh, Sarah's Yarn um, or Fiber Reverie is her podcast. Um, she's made a, a pair of these too, and hers are quite lovely as well. So I've started the second one, and yeah, I haven't quite uh, quite got them, the two of them done yet, but hopefully. I was wondering if maybe I'd give a pair you know, for Christmas. Not everybody wears fingerless mitts, but um, they might be talked into it. <laughs> okay, so the other thing that I wanted to show you is a Oh, I know. Um, I wanted to show you uh, a hat that I made, and I don't have it in the in the flesh, but I do have a picture of it here, and I hope that it will come through. It's not not picking up very well. I wonder how I could make that work. Hmm. Oh, there it is. Okay, so that's Elizabeth Zimmerman's heart hat, and what it is is you sort of knit a big heart. Not big, but you, you knit a heart and then you pick up the stitches all around the heart, which makes the back of the hat. And it's just in garter stitch on the sides of the hat. Um, and then you do a really neat uh, eye cord a detail around the edge and make the, the strings for the hat. Yeah, so I was pretty pleased. I gave that as a shower gift uh, not long ago and uh, it's a great little project. I got it out of the... Um, Elizabeth Zimmerman's uh, Knitting Workbook. I've used that a lot just, well, for designing these kinds of sweaters and also um, for that little project. But um, what I hope to do is uh, a baby surprise jacket coming up because uh, that's a really neat construction. It's almost like origami. The, um, the uh, sweater is knit in one piece and then you, at the end of it all, you fold it up and lo and behold, you've made a little sweater. So it's a great little a project and uh, I've got one half done which I can't really pull out right now because it's in deep stash but um, I'm hoping to complete it uh, pretty soon just to get that finished and off my needles okay so one more thing I'm going to show you but this has a story behind it so I'm going to do my best to tell you a story <laughs> Christmas is coming and in our house we celebrate Christmas we often will have um, Christmas uh, hosted to people who are uh, without a place to go, shall we say. Um, my my daughter invited uh, last year somebody w who was from uh, <clears throat> Alberta. So he didn't have a place to go, so he thought he would come. So he rode up on his motorcycle, and I'd never met him before, so it was really nice to have a new face at the table at dinner time. And uh, so he was, uh, I think, quite grateful to get a home-cooked meal. And um, he said it was the best Christmas dinner he'd ever had. So <laughs> I was really well rewarded, um, you know, by having him here. Um, and so uh, now the other part of that story is that my son, who is 30, he, he's got special needs, um, had delivered to our house a big package. 
and that package was actually from an unknown source we, we didn't actually know you know who had sent it uh, what it was uh, so I decided I would keep it under the tree and then Christmas time we'd figure it all out who, who had sent him this big package so after dinner we were all sitting around the Christmas tree and okay so now it's time for my son to open his present and um, so I have uh, three children uh, two sons and a daughter and uh, we were all there and of course our our mystery guest <laughs> was there um, uh, from uh, from Alberta and so Corey started to open his present and uh, the first thing that came out of this big huge box was a hand crocheted pair of white slippers so okay that's great um we weren't sure who had sent them but hey that that works and so he was happy to get those so next thing to uh, come out of the box was this green uh, hand crocheted tam so we all sort of chuckled because that's kind of not the kind of hat that probably Corey would wear but being the great soul that he is he is grateful to get it and he, he had tried on the, the um, slippers by now and then now he tried on the tam and I wish I had a picture of it because you know we were all getting a big chuckle out of it the next thing that came out of the box and this is something you're not going to believe <laughs> because I think when this came out of the box I lost it I, I was just like oh my god it's just, just like this is a mystery present and here somebody has put so much work into <laughs> these things so the next thing to come out of the box was these hand crocheted pair of pants I don't know if you could see but that is one each of a lot of work that somebody has done to create these hand crocheted pants now they're black so you're not going to be able to see them but oh my golly yeah okay well now I've lost it and I'm laughing so hard that I think I, I might be sick if I just had my Christmas dinner <laughs> and these pants came out I just thought it was just it was just too too surreal and uh, so my other son uh, being kind of a cautious type and uh, you know very kind of uh, diligent about security he takes the box and he puts the slippers and the tam and, and the pants uh, in the back in the box and he kind of kind of shoves it in the corner and it wasn't totally open by then but that just made me laugh even even more when he when he did that because I thought the whole thing was just too too funny so I thought no no we haven't finished opening it yet okay so the next thing to come out of the box was this hand crocheted sweater and the face on the sweater cracked me up I was just okay now my kids are saying mom uh, you're, you're are you having a heart attack <laughs> because I was just like oh my god I was like almost barking I was laughing so hard with with the sweater because I just thought this, the face was just so like comical and uh, like I don't think I ever I never seen anything quite like it and these are crocheted sweaters and uh, it's got the crocheted eyes and the face and everything so we tried it on my son and he was sort of standing there kind of un unknown to him what was going on but oh my god I don't think in my life have I ever laughed that hard and I wasn't laughing at at the projects because somebody had obviously put a whole lot of work into it it just it was the whole uh, event of having something delivered to the house we didn't know where it was from or we didn't know who had made it and out comes these things that obviously had taken a whole lot of work uh, but were kind of I don't know just very comical <laughs> so we laughed so hard about that project anyway and the gift we later found out that it was somebody that my son had met at a summer camp and I didn't know anything about it but they must have exchanged addresses and 
and the dear soul went to a lot of effort to make make this gift but I doubt that they knew how much pleasure and laughter we got out and uh, that was a Christmas to remember just because of it so this year um, I have found out that the mystery guest at our house that night um, he uh, is uh, expecting a baby with his his partner and so I said um, to my daughter I will make him a sweater so her reply back to me was mom can you make a sweater like we enjoyed last Christmas so I have started <laughs> now this is kind of funny because you don't often see a baby in black but I just thought Oh, it's just too much of an opportunity to pass up some of the laughter that we had that Christmas. Oh my goodness. So I chose this pattern out of the 60 Quick Knits from America's Top Yarn Shops. It's a, a Cascade 220 uh, book, but it's just a simple sweater. And I thought, okay, I'm going to knit that up very quickly. And what I'm going to do is have my daughter, who is a lot better at um, uh, probably overstitch or duplicate stitch than I am, um, make a face on this baby sweater. So this is the back, and I'm just starting the front now, and I've yet to do the sleeves, but I think I can get it done by Christmas time. And uh, so she'll make this face that will have the two white eyes and the face and the, the big smile. And, and so uh, we're hoping that he'll open it, you know, Christmas. I don't think he watches this podcast, although I think he might follow me on Instagram, so I'll have to be careful. But um, anyway, I just thought I would share that funny story with you. Um, I know that uh, families, uh, seasons, uh, uh, gatherings around this time of year, they will uh, often have uh, such, you know, memorable laughs and, and things that, you know, they remember from year to year. And this was something our family is going to always remember. <laughs> Um, so I don't really have anything else to show you. Um, I did want to just wish you all a really happy holiday season. And um, I'm going to try to make another podcast coming up uh, in the new year. Um, hopefully I'll get a little bit of time to work on some of my projects because I'll have a week off, you know, be quick between Christmas and New Year's. Um, I did want to give a quick shout out about a podcast that I've seen and I really enjoy. Two young women from uh, um, New Zealand, and it's called the Fiber Morphics Podcast. And I noticed that uh, Shara from the Shara Made Podcast uh, did also give a shout out to them, and uh, I just wanted to uh, do that as well. So I hope you have a great season, and uh, we'll see you again in 2017. Okay, bye for now.